be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. Oh, the lovely voice of Marilyn Monroe, uh, whose dress, by the way, has just been worn by Kim Kardashian uh, at the Met Gala. Well, here she is singing about diamonds, and I remember Madonna did a whole remake of her, a music video uh, from this, at least a scene from this movie in her music video, Material Girl. Um, are certain diamonds better friends than others? And we're inspired to dive into this topic because there's been an article at CNA.Asia called Are Lab-Grown Diamonds the Real Thing or Are They Fake and Valueless? And we ask experts to weigh in. You can read about that at CNA-Lifestyle.Asia, but here... <laughs> On CNA 938, uh, we bring back a, a great guest who knows all about this, Amanda Koo, founder of eClarity, a jeweler in Singapore. She's our expert today. Hi, Amanda. Welcome back to the show. Hello, Yasmin. Good nice, day to everyone. <laughs> nice talking with you again. So can the quality and value of lab-grown diamonds match the real thing? Um, so before we go into the definition of value and how it correlates to expression of love, um, the price of lab grown diamond is about one third to half of that of a natural diamond. Mm -hmm. And in terms of quality, lab grown diamonds and natural diamonds have the same chemical, physical and optical property. I see. And hence their popularity, obviously, driven, of course, by the younger generation who are very mm -hmm. concerned about the environment. Exactly. So the people who are from the younger generation, say the couples who are coming in to buy the engagement rings and they are in their 20s. So we have girls and guys who come in and say, you know, they have no problem with the budget. They have rather high budget, but they, they are eco-concerned. And so they choose lab-grown diamonds instead of uh, natural diamonds for their engagement ring. Now, beyond that, there's also another uh, favorite topic and favorite concern from these younger generation, which is the fact that lab-grown diamonds has more transparent supply chain. And so they can then ensure that this, these are not conflict diamonds, which was a concern that we had during our time. If you remember the movie Blood Diamonds and how, uh, you know, the, the children were were exploited to mine diamonds and all that. So the process has become uh, something that the younger generation who choose lab-grown diamonds don't have to worry about. Okay, but why do people generally remain snooty when it comes to lab-grown diamonds? We sniff at them. I think the first most popular misconception is people come in and they use the word fake to describe lab-grown diamonds. So I always use the term uh, synthetic diamonds, simulant diamonds, um, you know, um, and I, I teach my couples and my customers the difference. Now, when we talk about synthetic diamonds, lab-grown diamonds, they are real diamonds. They are grown in a lab with high pressure, high temperature, which is similar to the ones that are grown under the wall. Um, and the properties are the same. So those are synthetic diamonds. When we talk about fake diamonds, we're talking about similar diamonds, which are like the CZ, the YAG, the GGG, the Moissanite, the cubic zirconia, glass or plastic. So these are fake diamonds. So this is one misconception that, um, that we can clarify. Now, secondly, people tend to think that since you're growing the lab-grown diamond, so can you then control the quality? So can we all get flawless, D-color, triple excellent diamonds very easily? Now, the, the answer is no, because the growth environment, while it is in a lab, but is not within human control, because we have all the microscopic minerals in the world, and then when we grow our diamonds, these minerals will be entrapped inside the diamonds, and these becomes our inclusions which affect the clarity grading so this just tells you i mean if the crowd's going to get younger and younger and a lot more educated um about the environment not just that a lot more well read in general just for themselves then lab grown diamonds will have a great future here in singapore we is an unknown but looking at the trend for this year and past years it has been growing since ever since right and i started noticing very closely since 2019 uh, that it has been growing all the time. Are there any disadvantages to lab-grown diamonds, Amanda? Sorry, what do you say? Are there disadvantages to lab-grown diamonds? 
Okay, so um, one thing I could think of is currently GIA GIA report. You know, the great, the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest grading lab. Yeah. Um, they are not issuing physical report for lab grown diamonds, so it's only digital report. So people are not very used to that. That's first. Second. Um, um, you know, all the misconception that we have that could be a disadvantage for lab grown diamond as well, mm-hmm. right? And uh, thirdly, of course, when we talk about future value, it's still unknown. Uh-huh. So so these are the few things that are the disadvantages for okay. lab grown diamond. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you for giving us uh, some education on this, at least. Uh, we have a deeper study at cnalifestyle.asia. Read the article there, guys. Amanda Koo has been my expert today. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin. Founder of eClarity. They are a jeweler in Singapore. Coming up, we speak with a woman who had a first.